Hi guys and girls, and welcome to a new tutorial. Um, I'm going to be a little bit rusty, it's been a while, it's been three weeks. Uh, apologies for no content. Um, unfortunately, right after I got home from university, we had a, um, a death in the family um, that we've been mourning over. Um, so... Yeah, I haven't felt like doing tutorials, but I'm I'm coming back now. Uh, we've said our goodbyes. Uh, life goes on, and she wouldn't want us to sit around moping. Um, so, you know, there it is. Uh, that's why I've been gone. Uh, please don't flood me with any like sympathetic messages. Um, as I say, it's in the past. This particular family member. Uh, had specific beliefs and wouldn't want to be, you know, remembered and mourned over. So I'm just going to respect that and just going to get on with things. Um, because I've been gone for so long, I'm actually going to show you guys how to make something quite cool. We're going to start out with something complex. We're actually going to make a zip line. You might be able to see here, zip line BP. Um, I'll quickly show you how this is going to work. Now it's going to, it's not going to be the same exactly as this, but you can see here that the guy goes down a specific spline that has been set up. And this is going to work very closely like the one that I've created in, in the, the Depot game, where you can just grab your spline and you can just add more points to it if you wish. And it will update that in real time in the editor for you because we're using the construct script. Uh, and we're going to design this with as much modularity uh, as much modularity as we can so that you guys can customize this to, to suit your needs. So I'm going to quickly just get rid of that one out of the world. Uh, I'll be providing you with this uh, wire underscore SM. This is just a placeholder thing so that you uh, you guys can actually uh, create this. Now this is actually quite high poly so that it can bend the way that I need it to bend. Um, if we were to check out the wireframe, you can see that it's actually quite dense for what it is. It's what it is. <laughs> let's not start seeing it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's just get to work with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click blueprint class actor and we're going to call this zipline underscore bp we're going to open this up and we're going to have just a blank blueprint now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a component and this is going to be a spline I'm just going to have a spline i'm going to name this zipline now that's selected i'm going to add a another component this is going to be a box collision this is going to be the start point and with the start point selected, what we're going to do is we're going to add a static mesh. And this is going to be the, well, we'll just call it mesh one. Back with the zip line selected, we're going to add another box collision. This is going to be the end point. And with the end point selected, we'll add another component. And you guessed it, static mesh. And this is the mesh 2. Now the reason we've done this like this is now we've created a hierarchy. So if we had the zip line selected it's going to move everything including the start point and the end point. If we have the start point selected it's just going to move the start point and the the mesh that's assigned to that. But right now we don't have anything in there so what we're going to do is I'm just going to stick in a cube just so that we can see this. Ta -da! And then we're just going to shrink that bad boy down about that. We'll copy that over. And then same for this one, we're going to add a cube to this. Paste that in. And this was at minus 40 centimeters. So now you can see if we grab the start point, it should move one of the meshes. And it does. Um, we'll quickly compile that. Uh, and that's going to be the start of our actual blueprint. And this is going to act as our blueprint here. So we're gonna go in. We're gonna, blah, blah, we're gonna reverse that. We're just blah, blah, blah. right. Let's delete some of this. We want to start with the begin play, and the reason we're gonna do this is because uh, we need some stuff. So the first thing I'm, I'm actually gonna do in here is I'm gonna add a variable, and this is gonna be our character. So you're gonna search for your character here. I'm using the third person, so I'm gonna search for third person character. We need to create a reference to this character. I'm gonna just call this variable car ref. Oh gosh, 
he's put in all the letters in except the right ones. So we're going to have character ref here. Now, on begin play, we're going to cast to our character, which in my case is the third person character. You can use whichever character you want. And then we're going to get player character and plug this into the object so that these things can actually communicate. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the character reference to our third person character. Okay. And what we'll do after that is we're actually going to change uh, some some timeline, but we haven't got the timeline yet. So we're going to leave this here. Now what we're going to do is with the start point selected, we're going to right click this, add event, on component begin overlap. What we're going to say is the other actor uh, cast to third person character. If the other actor is the third person character, then what we will do is enable input and we will get player controller and plug this into the player controller what this is going to do is it's going to let this blueprint look for key presses which normally you wouldn't be able to do we start point selected on end overlap I'm being blind right. on right Uh, oh, there it is, right there, right underneath me. Come on. On end overlap with the third person character, because we only want the third person character to affect this. So, cast to, or whichever character you're using, you can do this with first person as well. And then obviously, you guys are going to have your own blueprints. What we're going to do is then disable input, and we'll just plug the player controller into the disable as well. We'll just highlight this, press C for a comment, turn, uh, well, we'll see, toggles, control, there we are. Next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make the system for moving along the zip line, and this is where we're actually going to have our really tasty timeline that I talked about earlier, tasty timeline, uh, I'm going to make this E, so I'm going to search for keyboard, E, there it is. So. When keyboard is pressed, we want to do once because we only want this to be able to be activated the one time. We don't want to be able to let the character just spam this as long as he's inside that first put at the the start point. Uh, we're going to do once. What we're going to do is I've got it all written down because you know I'm rusty. As I say, I'm reading my notes at the same time. Ha ha. <laughs> this is what happens when you you don't do any work for a while. Timeline. We're going to say uh, we'll call this moves, oh no, we'll just call this zip time, there goes zip time, uh, we'll play this from the start, we'll open zip time up, we're going to set the length to 1.5 seconds, we'll add a float track, add a key, we're going to go zero zero, add another key, add, uh, on, add another key, 1.5 Okay, and then what we're going to do is go back to the event graph, and the new time we're actually going to start at point 0.2. Uh, this is just going to give us a slightly smoother um, transition. Um, for whatever reason, if we start at 0, then we're going to get this really dodgy sort of movement uh, with the character. Probably just because he's... You're going to be able to activate this when he's not uh, specifically on the the zip start itself so it's going to look a little bit janky because it will suck him to the zip start and then he'll go whereas this way he's going to start a little bit down uh, the zip wire so it's not going to matter whether or not he's on that specific point so it's just like a little bit of a bracket here to to get rid of a, the first part of the animation uh, it's going to help us out let's just quickly open this up uh, this float track we want to rename this preferably uh, movement there we are close that down. The next thing we're going to do is what we're going to we're going to update uh, set actor location set actor location and this is going to be our character ref so we're going to put the character ref into the target we're going to turn on sweep because we don't want it to get blocked by anything or other do we? yeah 
Uh, yeah. So, yeah. We, <laughs> we wanted to stop. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no, I'm dropping everything. <laughs> we want it to stop if it's if something's in the way, because we don't want the player to teleport through things, is what I was trying to get at. Just give me one moment. There we are. I have my morning tea with me. I'm so British. I've seen a couple of you guys comment on how British my, my voice is. I do drink tea. There you go. Right. So, what we're going to do now is we need to grab our zipline and drag this out. We are going to see get spline length. Oops. And then we're going to multiply this value by a float, so float, uh, float multiplied by float. We're going to plug in the movement here. Uh, then get location a distance along spline with a local coordinate space. Plug this into the new location. Uh, yep, that's what I've got written down. Awesome. And now what we want to do is we want to just quickly right click, uh, make a new custom event. And this is just going to be called reset. We'll plug this into the reset. And then on finished, we just want to reset. Like so. So when the zip line's actually finished, it's going to reset our do once and allow us to do it again. So we'll quickly compile this. And now we will just quickly comment this out. Comment zip line movement. There we are. And now we're going to go back to our event begin play because there was something that we haven't done here. And um, this is going to be um, our zip time. So because we've made this our timeline now, underneath our components, we actually have this here. I'm going to drag this out. We're going to get it. And from the zip time, we want to set play rate. Plug that in. And now we're going to add a new variable. This is going to be a float. We're going to call this play rate. We're going to click the little eyeball on the left-hand side to make this exposed so that we can change this in editor. And we'll plug this into the new rate. Now we're going to set this to a default of 1, which will just play at a regular speed. Anything below 1 is going to play it uh, slower, so if it's 0.5 it's going to be at 50% speed and so on. Uh, and anything higher, so if it's at 2, it's going to be double speed. Um, the reason that we're doing this is so that, you know, this is modular. You can use the same blueprint and just tell it how quick to play the zipline, because you don't want a long, long, long zipline to take the same amount of time as a short, short zipline, do you? Um, because, you know, it's going to make it look super duper fast. So that's the actual zipline uh, movement and functionality done. So we're going to go into the construct script now. And this is where things are going to get a little bit more complex. So the first thing we'll do is we'll drag out our zipline. And we need to do some stuff with this. So we'll drag off of that. And we're going to get the number of spline points. And now we start doing maths. Now, I'm not a fan of maths. There you go. Return value. <laughs> make array. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a list of every single spline point. And from this we're going to get. And we're actually going to get zero, which is the first one inside of our little list. And then we're going to uh, drag out our zip line again. And we will... Ooh, what have I written down there? My handwriting is like chicken scratches get location and tangent at spline point yes get location and spline <laughs> and tangent at spline point we're going to plug the get into the point index and that's going to tell us you know which one that we actually want going to leave this on a local and then we will drag out from the return value again my bad i just punched my table <laughs> make an array I'm a mess. <laughs> We're going to get 
again, but this time we're just going to plug the get number of spline points into the get so that we make sure that we get the very last one because it's going to count how many are in here and then the number that we're going to get here is going to be how many we have. So this will get the end and the zip line. Uh, we'll just copy the lovely little node here, plug this in. Come on, cheeky fella. There we are, and there we are. So those are those, all lovely jubbly. And now what we're going to do from the construct script is we're going to say for loop. All right. For loop, we're going to get this and say minus integer. That's going to be minus two. Uh, last index, first index. It's going to be zero. I believe. Didn't actually write that down. Or did I? Apparently not. <laughs> so start point, we're going to drag this out. We're going to set a relative location. Uh, plug in the loop body here. And the location is going to be from the, the spline point with a zero in it. And then same again, endpoint will set the relative location of the endpoint to the other. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly move some stuff around a little bit because, you know, I like things in a specific way. And just because that's bugging me, I don't like that, that's bugging me. I feel like I've forgotten to write something down. No, broken window. Come on, there we are. Right. I know that is exactly what I've done. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you forget that you've written something down, or you've written it down in such a way that you're not sure that that's actually what you did, this is what I did. Oh, such dope. Right. Okay, so. We've got all that now, so what we want to do from here, we're just going to comment this out. I'm going to say sets start and end points. So this is going to make sure that our start and end points are always at the start and end of our spline, no matter how many points it's got in it. So from this, the next thing that we need to do is add a spline mesh. Boink, there it is, that spline mesh component. Now with this selected, you can see we have a static mesh available here. We're going to find the wire static mesh. Which one of these shall I use? Uh, they're both the same, but I want to make sure that it's in the right thing. Uh, that one. And now the forward axis, we're going to change this to a Y. Okay, now we're probably not going to be able to see it because we haven't actually done anything with it yet. Um, and we're just going to leave that there like that. That's That's pretty much public fine. We're going to attach to component default scene root. There we are. And the return value is going into parent. We're going to keep all this relative so that's all fine. Now from the return value again we can actually drag out from this this time. And we're going to set start and end. Okay. Now, before we can do any of this, we need to do some more stuff down here with our lovely for loop. And the for loop from the index, we're going to get location and tangent. Yep, location and tangent at spline point. Okay. And we're going to do this a second time, only we're going to plus one it. So we want to plus. So in plus one, we get location tangent spline point. Now the first one is going to take the location and put into start position. The first one's tangent into start tangent. The second one's location into end position and the end tangent into the tangent of the second. Okay, so that will do a thing. So we will compile that real quick. And now that's going to do some stuff. 
and we should now be able to just customize this up. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see we've got a cable on there now. Uh, I believe the start point is the one that doesn't have the circle on it, which is our blueprint default seam route. So the start point is the one without that. And you can see now that this is actually extending the mesh. And if we were to hold Alt and drag with the start point selected, we can add a new point. But I suggest we do this from the end, which will allow us to do things a little bit nicer. Although, I'm saying that it's a bit funky. So you can see that now this is working properly. It's allowing us to do what we want. <coughs> so we'll take this. Ooh, hello. Take our start point, and we're just going to move it around. Place it up here. We're actually going to put it over here. Now, I'm aware that that doesn't look very much like a zip line. You know, it's a bit of a dodgy, dodgy uh, shape we got going on. But you know, I'm not fussy. <laughs> oh, we're going to go here. And no, we can't do anything with this because you know, it's balked. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise the actual blueprint up like so. But now in our details panel we can grab the two meshes and we can move these down without affecting the rest of the blueprint. Oh, it's not letting me not let me zoom. So let's quickly find out where that's like. Not let me zoom. Let's open this up. Okay. Well. Ah. That would be why. That would be why. Okay. We found the gold bread. Okay. So. Inside of our construct script, we've just got to change some things about. So the get zero location is actually going into the endpoint, and then the get with the entire length is going into the start points set relative location. So we'll compile this like so, and now you can see that it's moved to where our start and endpoint is. So now if we were to go down to the bottom and touch this, we should go the right way. And we do. Yeah, so that was just, that was silliness on my part. I should have realized as soon as I said that the circle is at the end, that should have been a hint for me that, you know, we're doing this wrong. So I'll probably cut a lot of that out. It's going to take a longer to, to upload, I think. <laughs> So yeah, I'll cut some of that. So that that you, you guys are probably just going to teleport to this area and then just be like, oh my god, he he's like he didn't just waste ten minutes. I did. There you go. This is why like daily practice. Stay stay sharp. Don't don't take breaks. Just practice every day because like you forget stuff, bugger it up. So let's just quickly make something a bit more nice. So we'll just. Put some of these spline points downwards. Now this is not a very um, smooth transition right there. It's not a smooth thing. If we go over here now, we press play, and we overlap with this. You see, it goes down the spline. Um, now that's a bit awkward with the third-person character because we he's going down the spline um, from his hip. So what we actually want to do is we want to figure out how high his head is uh, and then go from there so we'll go into the zip line and what we're going to do is head to the event graph we're going to uh, break vector and then with the x and the y we'll make a vector make vector And the Y, we want to minus about half of his height. Minus. So float minus float. I think he's he's 180-ish tall. So we'll, we'll minus 90 from that. 
and we'll plug that into the new location instead. I'll press play and then he should now. Oh, it's going through his head. <clears throat> so, a little bit more minus, maybe 90. We'll say 100, we'll say 100. I'm not setting up any animations for this, this is just going to show you guys how to make this work. Let get us close enough. <laughs> close enough, he said. That'll do! He's still sliding through the brain, but whatever. Uh, so now we're just going to get rid of the play from start with the overlap, and we will do it from here. So there we go. <coughs> Excuse him. One. So now we should be able to do it by pressing E, and we do. So he gets a little bit stuck up the top there because of the new location we just gave him. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to move the mesh a little. So now the best part about all this is this this is all customizable, so you can set these things to wherever you want them. If we're touching this, we can press E and whoosh. Still getting a little bit stuck there. Uh, so we'll get the mesh itself. Shrink this down a little. Place it a little lower than he is. Step him down. We still a little stuck, but you know what you do. There we are. <clears throat> so we've got that all all sorted now. We can go to a slightly further length, and we can say uh, go into the construct script, and we can change the meshes themselves. So we'll add a variable, and this is going to be a static mesh. Just make a reference to a static mesh, and then we're going to expose this. We're going to call this uh, mesh. Ooh, hello. <laughs> that capital M being a rogue mesh. And what we're going to do is then grab our mesh one and our mesh two. Set static mesh. We will set the static mesh to be mesh. Whoa. Just change one of the variables. Brilliant. Get that back out. St set static mesh to mesh. I'm not sure we can plug both into here. No, we can't. So we will do the same again for number two. Set the mesh to mesh. Plug this in here. And now we'll quickly. Oh god, we've opened up the help. Here comes Chrome. Go away. Now, if we're in here, you can see we don't have a mesh anymore, but we've got this lovely mesh box here, and we can say, you know what, I actually want this to be a cube, or we can search for anything. So we can say door frame, we can put a door frame in there, but you know, it's currently quite whack because of the way that I've uh, resized everything. Um, so if you want to do that, we're going to have to go into the spline and just grab the meshes and change all this scale back to one. We'll compile that. Although the one of these is still going to be quite squished, this one, because of this being all resized. Um, so start point, we're just going to say one, boink. Oh, hello. Why are you still all squished? Oh, because I resized them in here as well. Boink. There we are. So we've got this uh, door frame now instead of a cube, and we can, you know, kind of be all like, yeah, it's a thing. Woohoo! So, there you guys have it, uh, a workable zip line. Uh, sorry for the the couple of hiccups, as I say I'm rusty, but this is quite a cool little thing for you guys to work on, hopefully it's something you guys are going to be able to use in your projects. Uh, I'll be trying to get some more tutorials out at some point soon, <laughs> so you know, throw some ideas at me, spam me, just be all like, just do what I always ask you not to do, just send a ton, because like, I have lost my list, I don't know where the list is, because I moved home again, uh, so I've lost most of my list, uh, so just spam me, just go, can you make this, can you make this, can you make this, uh, I've had a couple of people message me like, yesterday, just for, like, almost an entire system, it's like, I might as well build your game if I'm going to show you how to do that, <laughs> it's like, can you make me this, 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 and this? It's like, oh, you want me to create the entirety of GTA? Okay, one second. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, it's been nice doing this again for you guys. Uh, so I'm going to...
get back into it again. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.